much as I like you guys, we get kind of tired of being around the cameras. The Minnesota Vikings. So tired. Veteran superstars and young men barely old enough to buy a beer. Proven pro bowlers in the prime of their careers, passing along winning attitudes to aspiring youngsters. Big time players make big time performances. Whatever it takes to get it, let's get a win on three. One, two, three, win! Let's go. They were the least experienced team in pro football, but they fought through the league's fourth toughest schedule and emerged just a touchdown or two shy of the playoffs. 20-yard touchdown run for Robert Smith, the Vikings. There was 23-year-old rookie Orlando Thomas, who led the NFL in interceptions. 23-year-old sophomore David Palmer, who paced the league in punt returns. 39-year-old veteran Warren Moon, who played some of the best football of his career. They set new single-season Viking records for total offense and total points scored. Only the 49ers intercepted more passes. Only the Cardinals tallied more takeaways. And since 1992, no team has scored more defensive touchdowns than the Minnesota Vikings. Big-time players. Big time performances, looking for that winning mix in 1996. Big time performances begin on special teams. And in Kadri Ismail, Minnesota owned the second best kickoff return man in the conference. The highest finish by a Viking since Darren Nelson led the NFC back in 83. Viking opponents didn't fare quite so well. While Orlando Thomas notched one of the season's two special teams touchdowns, Robert Griffith and Chris Walsh were the unit's two top tacklers. Others in the mix were 2-0 Alapate, Bobby Phillips and Richard Brown, Harlan Barnett and Pete Persich. And then there was David Palmer. David Palmer eyes a run back from the 26, straight ahead 30, gets a block 35, 40, 45, 50, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, the Vikings even their record at one and one. Cox's arm and fires upfield to Kadri Ismail. The ball is tipped. Caught by Ismail. 45, 40, 45, 40, 45, 40. Good tough ball game. As we know, it takes an awful lot to win a football game in the National Football League. The big thing now, guys, is keep in mind how hard it was. I mean, if we could bottle this feeling, we would play the Dallas Cowboys right now. Because right now is when we have the best feeling about what it feels like how to win. Next week, we're an underdog. But when they come in here, they come to our home. We have to be able to play our style of game. Now we are showing some signs of it. Tiger, Tiger on the left half. Spread right, run past 60, counter, double comeback. Spread right, run past 60, counter, double comeback on one. Remember, this one's going to happen quick. Remember, say it's a shorter drive. Viking-style football is fashioned during the week on the practice fields at Eaton Prairie. Double comebacks, very good. You got to hold up, line. This is a big play for us. You got to hold up. For the up most front. part, it may be as simple as just this and this. But equally important when preparing for a team such as the Dallas this, Cowboys this, this, is the mental part of the game. Studying Again, defensive alignments and strategies and projecting ways to beat them. And you just can't pass up the Orlando or the Houston. By all means, you can always go to those if you want to take a straight shot at it. Now, just got to make sure we don't have any penalties here. Right, just go a 3-0, double right 
high spear, a double left spear, rip Denver, not a shoot. Double left spear, rip Denver, give us a good throw. Okay, let's go, this is where he's got to make his money. Let's go, Warren. Moves back, looks right, fires the ball, caught, touchdown! Touchdown. Jake Reed! The Vikings have taken a 9-6 lead over Dallas. Well, he held him in, he did, like, super fast and fair. For most of the game, Minnesota frustrated the mighty Cowboys. Hey, way to go up front, big boys. Hey, way to stop them. That's a big series there. Come on now. Come on now. We just got to finish them off. Deep drop. Here comes Randall. He sacks him up the front Psycho. Hey, now. We got to find some way to get the job done now. It's right there for the taking. It's right there for the taking. Moon drops back to the goal, fires. It's caught by Reed on a slam pass. He's inside the 35 dive. We got him guessing, right? We got him guessing over here, defense. Let's go. We got a nine, eight, nine yard line. Spread right, run past 60 counter, double cut. 60 counter, double cut. 33 seconds, all we have left. watching that Sunday night game against the Dallas Cowboys and we thought we could play and play well. We came up just a little bit short. We had some chances. We didn't take advantage of them, but we fought all the way for 60 minutes. We did some good things. I think the big thing that we've got to do now is make sure that we go to Pittsburgh next week that we play this type of game. This game was, was better than the first two, but not quite good enough. After the disappointing loss of the Dallas Cowboys, we had to come back versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. We were ready for the task. Six picks, half of them by rookie starters, one by Florida State cornerback Corey Fuller, two by Southwestern Louisiana star Orlando Thomas. Thomas was named NFL Defensive Player of the Week for his work against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But in this game, everybody contributed. Third and eight, shotgun for Miller. He's back there by himself, scrambling, firing downfield, picked off by Del Rio. Has a block. He's in the 45 at the 50. Looks the lateral, does to Thomas at the 30 at the 25. Back to back engagements with last year's Super Bowl teams. One, a heartbreaking overtime defeat. The other, a smashing victory. After four weeks, Dennis Green's young Vikings were playing big time football. I got it, Bull! I got it! You got to love it! In a recent survey of NFL general managers and player personnel directors, this man was named one of the top two outside linebackers in the NFC. It would appear that fourth-year pro Ed McDaniel is no longer a secret weapon. Just like Clemson Rock, the Rock, straight out of Clemson. Last season, McDaniel recorded 19 and one-half tackles behind the line of scrimmage. No other defender in pro football was even close. Joining McDaniel on the outside in 96 will be former Cowboy Dixon Edwards. One big reason Pittsburgh's comeback fell short in Super Bowl 30. Speed and experience outside will quicken the development of middle linebacker Jeff Brady. Forced into action due to injury in his first NFL start, Brady was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week. 
First year starter Ezra Tuaolo teamed with John Randall at defensive tackle. While on the outside, second year pro Fernando Smith showed promise at left defensive end. And rookie first round pick Derek Alexander sees the starting job on the right. Despite six new starters on defense, this unit maintained a Viking tradition. Only three teams in football allowed fewer rushing yards than the Vikings. Tom Zach with a snap, drops back, hands it off on a draw play. Given off to Morris, who fumbles the football. Fuller picks it up at the 15 and the 10. Cuts in on, down toward the goal line and in for a touchdown. Corey Fuller. It was Minnesota's pass defense that wasn't always reliable. Still the left hander to throw. Cox and fires a field pick oh, off by Washington. Down. The 50. Looks for a block in the 45 and the 4. Oh, when they came up big, such as this overtime interception against Houston, the Vikings often found a way to win. One set back, Smith, he gets the handoff, looks for rule, pushes the pile still down. Going. It's over. Five. Touchdown, Vikings! Robert Smith in overtime! But during a three-week stretch in October, despite punishing Tampa Bay's Trent Dilfer, despite hounding and harassing Green Bay's Brett Favre, Despite a yeoman effort against the Chicago Bears. Kramer wants it deep downfield to Conway. It is caught. The Vikings dropped three straight in the NFC Center. We're on his ass. Hey, we're doing our part. Our part is get to that quarterback. Them linebackers and DB, they got to do their part. You do yours. Don't try to play 11, 11 guys. Play one. John Randall is a three-time Pro Bowl starter. Come on, get it up, man. Come on. Now, lock and load, baby. Lock and load. Oh, 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 oh. He knows only one speed. Perhaps that's why, over the last five years, he's the NFL's top sacking interior lineman. In week 10, John Randall showed his teammates the way. When Green Bay and the Minnesota Vikings play, and in particular when they play at the Metrodome, we've got to come away with a win. The inspired Vikings pummeled Packers receivers, picked off Brett Favre's passes, and in general, ran the player of the year right out of the Metrodome. On this day, youth served experience in big-time fashion. Rookie running back James Stewart powered through the Packers, and the venerable Warren Moon maximized the field position Stewart provided. And goes Warren, looking, looking, fires, caught, touchdown! Andrew Jordan takes it, ran back, goes Moon to throw, leaping count! The NFC's Defensive Player of the Week saved his best for when it mattered most. Throws it up for grabs, it is caught. Oh, yeah! Mike Brady! A tip ball picked off by Brady at the 27 of Green Bay. The Vikings 27. This is a long-ass field goal here. Long snapper Mike Morris, holder Mike Saxon, and kicker Fouad Ravez sealed the verdict. The Minnesota Vikings were back in the hunt. But the 1995 Viking offense didn't really round into form until Warren Moon righted himself from an early season slump. Well, Warren Moon's always been a second half of the season player throughout his history. Big plays are starting to come, and when they come with Warren Moon, they come in bunches. Let's just say he got hot. 
when Warren Moon gets hot. Pass catchers climb to the top of the charts. Jake Breed found the handle on 72 of Moon's tosses. Nine of Reed's receptions went for touchdowns. Second and goal from the four. Back goes Warren Moon. Throws caught. Chris Carter. Touchdown, Vikings. Moon rolling left. Looks. Cox his arm. Fires the ball. Wide open. Touchdown. Chris Carter. Moon back to throw. Cox and fires. Touchdown. 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 Chris Carter. Chris Carter's 17 touchdowns were second only to Emmett Smith. And his 122 receptions matched his NFL record-setting total of the year before, making him the most prolific pass catcher over a two-year span in NFL history. And so when the passing game got a grip against Green Bay, there was reason for optimism. But Viking fans on the road in Phoenix wanted to see for themselves. Could Warren Moon rally the Vikings to victory two weeks in a row? Four touchdown passes later, the Viking faithful had their answer. Rolling right, Moon throws downfield, caught by Codry, breaks a tackle at the 40, the 35 at the 30 at the 25. Four more touchdown passes buried the Saints a week later. And a pair from Moon to Carter highlighted a December route of the Buccaneers. Moon with a snap, back pedals, Cox and Byers, caught! Touchdown, Jake Brown! Brad Johnson and Charles Evans finished up against the Browns as Minnesota won its fifth game in six tries. Inconsistency was laid to rest. After a 3-5 and five start, Dennis Green's Vikings were alive and well. Ahead lay a do-or-die showdown against the defending world champions. On a Monday night in San Francisco, the Minnesota Vikings spotted the defending world champions three touchdowns before staging one of their most complete performances of the 1995 season. 35, 40, and races down to the, the, the 40. At the 35, at the 30, at the 25, 20, and out of bounds. Down will try a 29-yard field goal. The hole by Saxon, the kick by Fawad Reves is up, and the Vikings are on the scoreboard. He hits it. Dak receivers right, Reed and Palmer. Back goes Moon, throws a fade. Caught by Chris Carter. Touchdown! Likes the four on the defensive line. Back goes Young, looking to pass. Hitching forward, throws it quickly. Intercepted, picked up by the Vikings. Donald Frank at the five, a knockdown around the two-yard line. Wing left is Greg DeLong, the tight end. Chris Carter up on the line at the right side. Back goes Moon, throws in the end zone. Caught by Carter. left, fires the ball downfield to Taylor, picked off by Orlando Thomas. One setback is Amp Lee, Moon retreats to throw a quick throw to the end zone, oh, touchdown, Jake Reed. The Vikings tied the score at 27, but in the end, a miracle comeback proved to be just beyond Minnesota's reach. Here goes Moon, throwing deep downfield to Jake oh, Reed, it's incomplete. It slapped down on his forearms as he was diving. Minnesota lost not only the game, but also any realistic chance of making the NFL playoffs. In retrospect, however, a game like this demonstrates quite clearly how well these young Vikings measure up against the NFL's very best. The offensive line is strong and Minnesota's versatile running backs are capable of game-breaking moments. The run defense remains one of the NFL's very best. 
The pass rush ranks as one of the NFL's most productive this decade. And the secondary contains several of the most promising young DBs in the business, eager to make their mark. This is a team poised to pull away from the pack to regain its rightful spot atop the NFC Central. Well, no one's more disappointed they're not making the playoffs in 1995 than the players and coaches of the Minnesota Vikings. But one thing we're convinced of, with the experienced players like Chris Carter, Johnny Randall and Warren Moon, the youthful exuberance of Orlando Thomas, we know in 1996 it's going to be our year. And I don't mean just make the playoffs, we're going to do a lot better. It's a team with some unfinished business. Proven all pros with a dozen more in development. Big time players who give big time performances.